Level monsters are a series of cards which level up into stronger versions of themselves by accomplishing some kind of task in order to gain their level up, similar to playing an RPG game. However, most of the level up tasks required were just too slow, and their effects weren't strong enough for them to see any kind of widespread success. The first wave of level monsters were introduced in 2004 in the Soul of the Duelist. This first wave of level monsters included Ultimate Insect, Horus the Black Flame Dragon, Mystic Swordsman, Dark Mimic, and Armed Dragon. And with this initial wave of five level monsters, they all kind of had different ways that they could level themselves up. And all of them saw varying levels of success, or lack of success. Ultimate Insect, for example, had four levels of evolutions, starting off with Ultimate Insect Level 1, which had zero attack and defense, and the only effect where it was unaffected by spell card effects. And its condition in order to level itself up are to simply have this card face up on your side of the field during your standby phase, where you can then special summon Ultimate Insect Level 3 from your hand or deck by sending this face-up card to the graveyard, which is how most of the level monsters work. They would send themselves to the graveyard in order to perform the special summon condition, and since they were special summoning stronger monsters from the deck, Konami thought to give them conditions which should not be too easy to fulfill. As Ultimate Insect Level 1 also had extra conditions where you can't use its level up effect during the turn that it's normal summoned, special summoned, or flip face up. So if you wanted to use Call the Haunted during the standby phase to bring this card out of the graveyard in order to activate its level up condition immediately without trying to protect a zero attack monster on the field, then you wouldn't be able to do so. Although you could use it during your opponent's end phase to the same effect. However, the exact same combo did work for Arm Dragon Level 3, who has the exact same level up condition, where it just needs to be on the field during your standby phase in order to bring out its higher level monster except without the restriction where it can't be activated during the turn it summoned. Which is odd because they both came out at the same time in the same set. So, what do you get for protecting Ultimate Insect Level 1? Well, Ultimate Insect Level 3, where it had the effect that if it was special summoned by the effect of its level 1 counterpart, then all your opponent's monsters lose 300 attack while it's face up on the field. And then it had the same level condition where it just need to exist during the standby phase in order to special summon the level 5 variant from your hand or deck and also has the same restrictions where you can't use the effect during the same turn that it's summoned. And the level 5 is the same thing, which finally brings out the level 7, which simply reduces the attack and defense values of all your opponent's monsters by 700 while it's on the field. Now, the ultimate insects are supposed to be better versions of the ultimate moth insect monsters, and they definitely are, but they were also a little bit too restrictive on how they went about doing their thing, and didn't really see any competitive play. However, one thing to note about the ultimate insects is that they didn't have any negative effects that prevented you from bringing the card out normally. They just simply only gained effects if they were brought out properly, which was not the case for all level monsters, as some of them had good effects that they just had baseline, so they had restrictions on how they could be brought out in the first place. Let's take a look at Mystic Swordsman level 2. It has the effect that if it attacks a monster that's face down, you can destroy that monster immediately with its effect at the start of the damage step. And then, oddly enough, its level up condition requires you to destroy a monster by battle, and not with its destruction effect, in order to bring out its level 4 version during the end phase. Mystic Swordsman level 4 has the same exact effects, except it has the negative condition where this card cannot be normal summoned, except it can be normal set, which is kind of useless for a level 4 monster that doesn't have some kind of flip effect. And the Mystic Swordsman level 6 has the effect that if it attacks a face down defense position monster, you can also destroy that monster with its effect, however, Instead of that card going to the graveyard, it's placed on top of your opponent's deck. Now, this effect is technically good. It's just not worth the effort of leveling up two monsters to get into it. Especially since its level 2 version can accomplish the same thing basically without jumping through hoops. Arm Dragon level 3 simply has to exist during the standby phase to bring out Arm Dragon level 5. And its level 5 version actually has different conditions for leveling up where it has to destroy a monster by battle in order to special summon the level 7 version, which is unique because most of the other level monsters have all had the exact same conditions for each level up. An Armed Dragon level 5 actually has a pretty decent effect on the field, where you can just send a monster from your hand to the graveyard in order to destroy a monster opponent controls that has less attack than the monster you sent. An Armed Dragon level 5 doesn't have any restrictions on its summon, unlike Mystic Swordsman cards. And then Arm Dragon level 7 just has a slightly worse lightning vortex-like effect on the field and isn't really worth going into. Dark Mimic level 1 allowed you to draw a card when it was flipped face up, which was actually just useful on its own. And then if this card existed during the standby phase, you get to special summon Dark Mimic level 3 from your deck, who simply has a better effect if it's special summoned by its lower level counterpart. 
where you get to draw two cards when it's destroyed by battle instead of only one. And really, the Dark Mimic cards are some of the best examples of how they should have iterated on the level monsters going forward, where they have decent effects on their own, and just have better effects if they're brought out through their normal procedure. However, they definitely did not take the Dark Mimic approach going into the future. Just a spoiler alert. And then finally, the Horus cards. Horus the Black Flame Dragon level 4 simply needed to destroy a monster by battle to level up during the end phase. And level 6 has the exact same level of conditions, although it was also unaffected by spell card effects while it was on the field. Which was a distinction that was somewhat important because Horus the Black Flame Dragon level 8 is probably the best level monster. Its effects are basically just conditions on how it can't be brought out except by its level 6 counterpart, and then just has the effect where, if a spell card effect is activated, you can choose to negate and destroy that card if you want. So Horus basically just allows you to shut down spell card effects selectively, which is super rare when it comes to shutting down all kinds of effects of one type of card. Usually they'll go the Jinzo route, where it just shuts down all effects that they're trying to negate, but not Horus. So this effect was legitimately good, and only a benefit to whoever controlled the card. It also has decent stats with 3000 attack baseline, so you can be pretty confident that it will stay on the field, especially after shutting down all your opponent's spell cards. And since Horus the Black Flame Dragon level 8 could activate its good effect no matter how it hit the field, it was the best target in order to level up with their only piece of good support called Level Up, with an exclamation point. And all Level Up did was allow you to send a level monster you control to the graveyard in order to special summon the higher level version of it from your hand or deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. And one of the great things about cards that ignore summoning conditions is that there's no real extra rules that come into play as long as you can special summon them from the hand or deck. So you could easily bring out Horus the Black Flame Dragon level 8, as long as you were able to get Horus the Black Flame Dragon level 6 on the field, and of course had level up in your hand. And even though Horus the Black Flame Dragon level 6 was immune to spell effects, it's not immune to the effects of level up, so you can send it to the graveyard in order to cheat out the level 8 version. Which is why it's in the card artwork of the spell, signifying that it's definitely the best target for the card. And out of all the level up monsters, Horus the Black Flame Dragon was the only one to actually see competitive play in the TCG, which is surprising because they did release more level monsters later on. None of them matched Horus in competitive play. Although Horus did not see widespread competitive success, and was only played a couple of times over the years before Dragon Rulers came out, where it was then played a couple more times in some variant of Dragon Ruler decks and specifically only in the side deck just because Blaster could search out the level 6 and potentially allow you to go into level 8 for spell negate monster on the field. Although, I should also mention, Dark Mimic level 3 did see some competitive play as well as a tour guide to the Underworld target, as well as a few times in some burn decks in 2007. So, outside of Horus, and to a lesser extent, Dark Mimic, the level monsters were not very successful. The only two pieces of support they received in their set were, of course, level up, which continues to this day being their only good piece of generic support, and the Graveyard in the 4th Dimension, which is honestly not very good. It just allows you to return two level monsters from your graveyard back to your deck. A short time after the first wave of level monsters, they released two more, being Silent Swordsman and Silent Magician. Silent Swordsman level 4 had the effect where each time your opponent drew a card, you got to place one spell counter on it, and it gained 500 attack for each spell counter, and its level up condition required you to have five spell counters on it, where during your standby phase you could send it to the graveyard in order to bring out its level 8 version, which simply had the effect where it was unaffected by your opponent's spell card effects. But it also had 3500 attack, which was very high back in the day, although not enough to see competitive play, because Silent Magician level 4 was incredibly slow with its level up condition, because outside of forcing your opponent to draw cards with some other kind of card effects, it would take you 5 turns of protecting the card in the field before it can complete its level up condition. Although it did make it a very lucrative target for the level up spell card, because it could just go straight into the 3500 attack beats deck that was immune to spell cards. There was also Silent Swordsman level 3, which had a level up condition similar to Ultimate Insect level 3, where it just needed to survive until your standby phase in order to bring out its level 5 version, while also not being usable in the turn that it summoned. Its level 5 version was passively immune to your opponent's spell effects, and its level up condition required you to inflict damage to your opponent's life points by a direct attack where during your next standby phase you could then bring out the level 7 version. And the level 7 version was just a straight up lockdown on all spell effects on the field. So kind of like a Jinzo, but for spell cards and not as good as Horus, which could selectively negate any spells you wanted, but still a really good effect nonetheless. 
And then shortly later, they released Winged Karibo level 10, Armed Dragon level 10, and a new support card called Level Modulation. And none of these cards saw competitive play. In fact, Level Modulation is kind of hilariously bad. It has the effect where you can special summon a level monster from your graveyard, ignoring its summoning conditions, but with the restrictions where that monster can't attack or use its effects for the turn that it's summoned, and your opponent draws two cards. And here's the thing with cards that ignore summoning conditions from the graveyard. They can only bring out a card that was properly special summoned first. So you can't just send Horus the Black Flame Dragon level 8 from your deck to the graveyard with Foolish Burial, and then just bring it out with level modulation, because it would need to have been properly summoned first. Whereas you can use a level up on Horus the Black Flame Dragon level 6 in order to cheat it out of the deck, because the rules for ignoring special summoning conditions are different for different places in which those cards are summoned from. Which I'm sure definitely confused a lot of people who are a lot more casual with these cards back in the day, seeing as they had two cards from their archetype which ignored summoning conditions, but only one of them worked the way you would think it does. And also, giving your opponent two card draws for the effect is just really bad. Like, hallmark of a bad cost for a card kind of bad. Level Monsters wouldn't really receive a new wave of support until 2006, where in the infamous set called Cyberdark Impact, they released two new level monsters as well as some new support cards, which, like level modulation, were all kind of hilariously bad. First, we have the Allure Queen archetype. They all have the effect where they can attach one of your opponent's monsters to them as an equip card, similar to Relinquish, although they can only target specific kinds of monsters. Allure Queen level 3 can only equip level 3 or lower, the level 5 version can only equip level 5 or lower monsters to it, but the level 7 version can equip any monster your opponent controls to it. However, the only thing they gain for being able to absorb one of your opponent's monsters is battle protection, and that's it. And since they all have incredibly low attack, it's really easy for that battle protection to just be used up by any monster attacking over them. Or at least cards like Relinquish or Destiny Hero Plasma, who have similar effects, are able to gain some kind of attack points from the monsters they equip. And the higher levels of Allure Queen only gain their equip effect when they're brought out properly, which means you can't use level up in order to cheese their effects. And then we have Dark Lucius, where its level 4 version has a pathetically low 1000 attack, and requires you to destroy a monster by battle in order to proc its level up condition. However, it does have the ability to negate the effects of a monster it destroys by battle, so it can stop floating effects. Its level 6 version only has 1700 attack, which again is very low for a level 6 monster, and basically just has the same effects and level up condition as its past counterpart, where its level 8 version finally has decent stats for the level at 2800. However, its effect is just DD Crazy Beast, where it banishes any monster destroys by battle, while also negating their effects. And then the new piece of support that the level archetype received was called Level Down, which is basically the opposite of Level Up, where you can return a high level level monster to the deck in order to special summon the lower level version of it from the graveyard, ignoring its summoning conditions. So it could be a decent card if you're trying to counter an opponent's level monster, although none of the monsters outside of Horus really saw competitive play, so it wasn't really something you'd need to concern yourself with. Although since it was quick play, I guess it could be used in order to allow another monster to attack during the battle phase. So, the new support they received in 2006 definitely didn't do anything to help them out. And level monsters wouldn't see a resurgence in play until 2013, when Dragon Rulers came out, and some of them used Horus in the side deck as an option. And then in 2009, they released Wing Kribo level 9, randomly, and it has no affiliation with its level 10 counterpart, and doesn't actually need to be leveled up at all. So the fact that it's a level monster is kind of irrelevant and probably just a flavorful thing. And that was kind of it for level monsters until 2016, where they randomly decided to release support for two of the level monsters, that being Silent Magician and Silent Swordsman. And by randomly, I think it's because they were anime cards. The Silent Magician archetype received a card aptly named just Silent Magician with no level which is a level 4 monster that can be special summoned from your hand by tributing any spellcaster type monster you control. It gained 500 attack for each card in your opponent's hand, once per turn it can negate one spell card effect, and if it was destroyed on the field by an opponent's card, you got to special summon Silent Magician level 8 from your hand or deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. So with Silent Magician, you no longer had to use Silent Magician level 4 in order to go into the level 8 version, and the card itself was just good on its own. A once per turn spell card negate that could float into a 3500 tank beat stick if it was destroyed was just way better than what the level monsters were trying to accomplish on their own. And the Silent Swordsman was kind of in the same vein. It was a level 4 monster that could special summon itself from your hand by tributing any warrior type monster. 
Once per turn, it could also negate a spell card. It gained 500 attack during each player's standby phases. And if it was destroyed, you got to special summon a Silent Swordsman monster from your hand or deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. Which meant it could go straight into Silent Swordsman level 7 and negate all spell effects on the field. The fact that both of these cards just floated into the main boss monster of the archetype meant you didn't really need to play any of the other level monsters and could just ignore the entire mechanic entirely and only reap the benefits of the final stages of those monsters. Although in 2016, even being able to just completely skip all the steps and go straight into the big guy, these two cards were not enough for either of those archetypes to see competitive play. Not in the TCG anyway. When they were brought over to Duel Links, they absolutely saw competitive play, and one of their support cards was even put on their ban list. As in addition to the Silent Magician and the Silent Swordsman, they also released a couple of other support cards for them, and one of them was called Silent Sword Slash. Where on a quick play spell card, you could increase the attack of a Silent Swordsman monster you controlled by 1500 permanently. And also, until the end of the turn, that monster is immune to card effects. And being immune to all card effects is easily the best for protection that a card can have. So you could just chain Silent Sword Slash to one of your opponent's removal effects. It allowed you to simultaneously give your monster a huge attack boost, avoid one of your opponent's effects, and then basically have an immune monster with a whole bunch of attack points on the field that was just going to crash over what her opponent might have with no problem. And also, it could be banished from the graveyard in order to add a Silent Swordsman monster from your deck to your hand which was just a little bit too high of a power level for Duel Links, although not good enough to see any kind of competitive play in the regular TCG. And then after 2016, there wasn't any other new level monster support, or any new level monsters until 2021, so very recently, when they released the Armed Dragon Thunder series. These are a series of support cards for the Armed Dragon monsters, which are actually level monsters, although they work a little bit differently than the original ones, and can be played alongside the original Armed Dragon monsters as well as the Armed Dragon Thunder monsters have the effects where their names are treated as the original Armed Dragon monsters while on the field or graveyard, and they can send a monster from the hand to the graveyard in order to forcefully level themselves up, and special summon the higher level Armed Dragon monster from your hand or deck, but only two to three levels higher each time. And since their names are treated as the originals, you could use Armed Dragon Thunder level 5 in order to properly bring out Armed Dragon level 7 from your deck. And the Armed Dragon Thunders also have effects that activate if they're sent to the graveyard in order to activate the effects of a dragon monster, which usually just involves gaining advantage in some way. So if you have a handful of Armed Dragon Thunders, it would be very easy to go all the way into the level 10 version with the level 3 version immediately on normal summon, as you could use level 3 to go into level 5, then level 5 into level 7, and then finally level 7 into level 10, while gaining advantage as long as you were able to ditch Armed Dragon Monsters from your hand for each of those level ups. So. It seems like they kind of fixed the level up effects by just allowing you to do them whenever you want. However, they kind of already figured out how to properly create an archetype of level up monsters way before the Arm Dragon Thunder monsters came out. More specifically with Rank Up XC's monsters. The whole theme of level up monsters was just weaker monsters slowly leveling up into a stronger version of itself. And this is exactly how a lot of Rank Up XC's archetypes work. Let's take a look at the digital bugs for example. They have three Xyz monsters who can rank up into higher level versions of themselves by detaching two materials from their previous iterations. Digital bug Corbage can special summon itself on top of Scar Radiator or any other rank 3 or 4 insect type Xyz monster by just detaching two of its materials and putting itself on top of it. Digital bug Rhino Sebes can do the same thing but for a rank 5 or 6 insect type monster, which digital bug Corbage fits that description. Anyone who's played Duel Links knows exactly how successful these Xyz monsters are, especially for their ability to rank themselves up on top of other monsters, even if they aren't specifically other monsters from their archetype. There's also the Utopia cards, which can rank up a lot easier, as a lot of the Utopia cards are just rank up on top of the original Utopia, and there's a couple of other rank up archetypes, but a lot of those require to use spell cards in order to bring out the higher level versions of themselves. But I think the Xyz monsters who level up on top of each other kind of fit the whole theme of leveling up better than the level monsters did. Mainly because they don't require main deck space. A lot of the times if you play the level monsters, you're going to get a lot of bricks in your hand as you don't want to have the higher level monsters in your hand, ever. Even if you did have the option to special summon them from the hand with their normal procedure. It was just always better if they were special summoned from the deck. So if they only ever existed in the extra deck, then you would never have to worry about accidentally drawing all the higher level monsters which was also fixed with the Arm Dragon Thunder monsters, where they're also useful in the hand because they have effects that activate if they're used as materials for the dragon monster stuff. 
So if it wasn't for the Arm Dragon Thunder cards, I probably would have said that the XC's rank up mechanic completely replaced how level monsters work. But the Arm Dragon Thunders all having Atlantean-like effects, where they gain advantages if they're used as materials to activate the effects of dragon monsters, definitely makes them useful while in your hand, and not just automatic dead brick cards like the old ones used to be. And a pretty funny thing to note about some of the level monsters is that there were a couple of retrains of some of the level monsters that saw way more competitive success than their original counterparts ever did. More specifically, Dark Arm Dragon and Dark Graffer. Dark Arm Dragon was the dark counterpart version of Arm Dragon level 7, and was so influential it was part of a tier 0 deck that literally revolved around the card. And all the card did was allowed you to destroy a card in the field by banishing a dark monster from your graveyard with a non-once per turn effect. And it could be special summoned from your hand if you controlled exactly three dark monsters in your graveyard. And all of this was way better than the original, which was cumbersome to bring out, and only had a weaker lightning vortex-like effect that required you to use resources from your hand to use. And Dark Greffer is a dark counterpart of Warrior Die Greffer, which Dark Lucius level 4 is a level retrain of that vanilla monster as well. And Dark Greffer has seen pretty much constant competitive play ever since it came out, and is currently limited to one copy because it's too good with Dark Warrior combos. Whereas Dark Lucius never saw any competitive play, which is ironic because Dark Lucius is in a whole bunch of card artwork, including Sakuretsu Armor, which is a trap card that was kind of a staple in the early days of Yu-Gi-Oh!, so a lot of people know of it and have used it. And lastly, there's a Duel Links only archetype of level monsters called the Masked Knights, which all have effects that allow you to, once per turn, inflict effect damage to your opponent, and level up during the standby phase. They're not good enough to see competitive play in Duel Links either, so that's not really worth a mention outside of just noting that they exist in that game. So why exactly did the level monsters fail? The biggest reason was they were just too slow to reach their full potential. Most of them required you to wait around a full turn before you could level up to their better versions, and almost none of them had effects that were actually worth waiting around for. Even the level monsters that did see competitive play, they were only used because of a combination of things in the meta just going well for them, where dragon rulers were broken enough to facilitate the downsides of Horus, and the dragon rulers coincidentally allowed you to search out the cards needed very easily by just doing their plays like normal. And coincidentally, the boss monster of the Horus archetype just happened to have a really good effect. And even then, it was only used as a side option, and kind of a niche one at that, where it wasn't even played in every Dragon Ruler deck. And generally, cards that require you to wait around in order to do something are just not fast enough with how the game works, where there's all kinds of removal that just kind of makes cards not super valuable if they have to stay around too long, or can't float into other cards. Which is what they figured out with the Silent Magician retrains, and how they bring out their boss monsters through their floating effects. And of course, the Armed Dragon Thunder retrains, which don't have to wait around at all, and can do the level up immediately. So if they were to fix level monsters to be less bad, what they would do is find a way to allow them to level up faster, and just give the cards better effects, which is exactly what they did with the Armed Dragon Thunder retrains. And in fact, the Armed Dragon Thunder series is just a really good example of what was wrong with the original level cards, i.e. being too slow to level up, and what they could do to fix them, i.e. just give them much better effects, in addition to some kind of floating effects, like they did with the Silent Magician retrains. Alright, and that's the video. Hopefully you understand how bad it is to wait around for a card to level up, without me having to go into detail about how modern Yu-Gi-Oh works, where a card barely stays in the field longer than your main phase, so of course you wouldn't be able to level up something during your next standby phase. And also, if you have any ideas for future videos that would fit into the series, I'm definitely looking for more ideas down in the comments.